Hello, my name is Derek Thomas, and in this video, we're going to take a look at how to solve a system of equations using matrices, but now not with two variables, but with three variables. That's what we're going to take a look at. So let's go ahead and get started. So here are my three equations. 2x minus y plus 3z equals negative 3. Negative x plus 2y minus z equals 10. x plus y plus z equals 5. So when I put this in a matrix, I will get something along these lines. You don't necessarily have to put the brackets, but it just helps with organizing your thoughts. So 2 minus 1 plus 3 equals negative 3. Now, how did I get that? The 2x here is the 2. The negative y is a, a 1. 3z is 3. And then minus 3. So all I did was remove the variables, if you will. And then here I have a negative 1. I have a positive 2. I have a negative 1, and I have a positive 10, and then I have 1, 1, 1, and 5. So this should all look familiar. And so remember, our goal here is to get that row echelon, if you will. And the row echelon, in case you forgot, you'll have, let's see here, you'll have 1, 1, 1 like that, and then you'll have 1, 0 here, a 0, and a 0. That's what we want. We're going for something like this. Now. The first thing that we're going to do to try to capture and complete our goal here is we want to flip row 3 and row 1 because if I do that, this 1 that is here, it'll move to be in the upper uh, top left corner. Now, in case you forgot, normally what we do is that we try to put a 1 here first, then get a 0, get a 0, put a 1 here, get a 0. That's the normal order of operations when you're trying to deal with matrices. And so that's what we're going to do right now. So if I do this, I will get something like this over here. I will have a 1, 1, 1, and a 5. Then I'll have a negative 1, a 2, a negative 1, and a 10. And then at the bottom, I will have a 2, negative 1, 3, and negative three, like so. That's what we're going to take with us when we move to the next slide. So let me rewrite that for you. So at the top right here, I have one, 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 five, and then I have negative one, two, negative one, 10, and then I have 2, negative 1, 3, negative 3, like so. Let me just go back and check, make sure that's how it is. Yes, 2, negative 1, 3, 3. All right, so this is what we have. Now, I want to now, in case you've forgotten, I want to try to deal with this negative 1 right here in the uh, far left in the middle column, or the middle row, excuse me. I want to get that to be a 0. Now, the easy way that I can see to deal with that is to add row 1 plus row 2. If I do that, 1 plus negative 1 becomes 0, and I'm able to cancel out my little guy right there. So here's how we look. This is what it looks like down here. This row does not change at the top. 1, 1, 5. Now here's the trick. 1 plus negative 1 is going to be 0. 1 plus 2 is going to be 3. 1 plus 1 is, I'm sorry, 1 plus negative 1 will be 0. And then 5 plus 10 will be 15. So that's what's new here. And then the bottom row is still going to be the same. 2, negative 1, 3, negative 3. So we have a 1 in the upper left-hand corner, upper left-hand top corner, yes. We have a 0 here in the middle, uh, middle row. Now we're going to deal with our little friend here this 2. We have to get that 2 to become a 0. Now, the easiest way that I can see to make this a 2, uh, this, to make this 2 disappear is to do the following. Negative 2, multiply negative 2 by row 1, row 1 times negative 2, and then add that to row 3. That's what we're going to do. Because if I do 1, negative 2 times 1, it'll become negative 2, and when I add it here, it'll become 0. So I'm going to do that right over here. Hopefully I have enough space. And so the top row is going to be the same. 1, 1, 1, 5. Nothing's changed. Same thing with the second row. 0, 3, 0, 
15. Now, here comes the new stuff for row number three. So, negative two times two is gonna be negative two, plus two is gonna be zero. All right, so negative two times two is negative two. I'll just write it up here at the top. Sometimes it helps with the mental math. Negative two plus negative one is going to be negative three. Now, again, negative two times two is gonna be negative two. Negative two plus positive three is going to be one, like so. And then negative two times five is gonna be negative 10. Negative 10 plus negative three is gonna be negative 13. That's what we have now. Okay, so I'm going to take this and move to another slide. So here's what we have now. We have one, 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 five, and then we have zero, three, zero, 15, and now we have zero, negative three, one, 13. I know my handwriting is not the greatest, but you get the point. Go back here, yes, that looks about right. Zero, three, one, five, okay. Now, this is the next step. We have to figure out a way to get our friend here, right? To get our friend here, this three needs to become a one. And so, in order to do that, it's very, very simple this time. We're going to take one third and multiply row two by that. That's all we have to do. It's the same as dividing by three, if you will. And so, this is only going to affect the second row. So, the other two rows are going to stay the same when we write the answer here. One, 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 five. Now, zero, three times one third is one. Zero, 15 times one third is five, like so. And then at the bottom, we have zero, negative three, one, and 13. We're getting close to the home stretch here. Now, we have one more piece of information that we have to deal with. We have to come up with a strategy in order to figure out how to make this negative three right here become a zero. That's our last goal. And that's the last thing we're gonna do. And so, this is what we're gonna do. Please watch carefully. We're going to multiply row two by three, and then we're going to add it to row, um, multiply row two by three, and then we're gonna add it to row number three. Because when we do this, when this number here, this one becomes a three, because we multiply by three, three plus negative three becomes a zero. And we'll be just about done there. So, let's do this up here in the top. We're just about done here. The top row stays the same, one, 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 five. Second row stays the same, zero, one, zero, five. And now here comes the last row. So the first one is zero because zero times three is zero, so that doesn't change. Now, one times positive three is three. Three plus negative three is zero. That's why we're gonna put that here. Now, here we go. So again, the same thing, nothing new happens here. Zero times three is zero plus one is still gonna be one. We want that one there, by the way, because now we have our row echelon right there. But we're not quite done, we have to deal with the 13. So, five times three. Five times three is 15. 15, I'm sorry. Five times three is 15. Is that positive 13 or negative? Oh, that should be negative 13. I'm so sorry. That should be negative 13. Sorry about that. Let me check. Yes, that's correct. It's negative 13 here. So five times three is 15. 15 plus negative 13 is going to be positive two, like so. So I need to make sure, clarify something. This answer from the previous screen was negative 13, not positive 13. And so when you take five times three, which is 15, 15 plus negative 13, you'll get a positive two like so. And so you can see here that we've got everything just about figured out. Because what's happening is this. In the second row, we have, remember the first column is X. Let me make sure this is clear. The first column is X. Oh, uh, hard to see. Uh, the first column is X, then our Y, then a Z. Okay, so here's what we know. In the second row, we know that y equals five. Why? Because there's one y, there's no x's, there's no z's, and then there's a five. So we know that y equals five. 
In the third column, Z, we know that Z equals 2. How do I know that? Because in the third row, there are no X's, because it's a 0. There's no Y's, there's a 0. And there's one Z, and that Z equals to 2. So now we just have to do really, really basic algebra to figure out, well, what is the value for X? So we're going to take this first row and simply solve for X. So X plus Y, which is 5, plus Z, which is 2, equals 5. So X plus 7 equals 5. Okay, X equals negative 2. So I can put that here. X equals negative 2. So we have our three values. And you can uh, 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 de evaluate this for yourself to, to determine if it's correct or not. Um, Remember, we didn't manipulate the first the first row. The first row was always x plus y plus z equals five. So you know we can already uh, infer that it'll work for the other two to two equations. So just to make sure things are clear, uh, let's see here. I will write this on this next slide right here. X equaled negative two. Y equaled five, and z equaled positive 2. Those are the three answers for this particular system of equation. So you can see a lot of work, a lot of fun, and we're not even getting into the really complex stuff. Sometimes there's no solution. In other words, they, they never intersect the three equations. Very frustrating when that happens sometimes. Uh, sometimes there's infinite number of solutions for like maybe for like one of the variables where it doesn't really matter. It gets crazy. But for a basic system of equation, we completed that process in this particular video. So in this video, what we did here is we took this equation, system of equations right here and we determined what the answer was, where they intersect at, in, of course, in three dimensions. And so we used matrices and, you know, we did some row flipping and we did a lot of funky mechanics here. <laughs> it's kind of hard to summarize all of that we did in this particular video. We added rows together. We multiplied one row by negative two and then added it to another row like so. And we kept going along and along until we were able to finally solve our equation. Now, how you do this, you, you have to, you know, have a little bit of creativity within some constraints in order to, to figure out what works and what does not work. But at the end of the day, we are finally able to achieve our answer right here. So I'm, there is many steps here, and I'm sure this is complicated, but your best friend is your best friend is to practice. And I mean practice ones where you can actually get an answer to. Sometimes the no solution ones and the ones that have infinite number of values can be very frustrating when you're a beginner, at least in my experience. So I hope this video was useful for you and I look forward to seeing you in other videos in the future. Thank you. Take care.